Our children are such a blessing. Amen. Amen. Just always remember that the, that the kids never undermine the children um, for where they are, uh, at the place that they are. Um, we have this amazing privilege to sow seeds into the next generation. And sometimes we get so caught up with life and our own lives that we sometimes forget to sow those seeds in our own children. And so, so it's very important for you to keep uh, being um, the example uh, of Jesus for your children. I mean, sometimes you just, some things you, um, you just, have, <laughs> it sounds weird when I say it, but sometimes we just, um, no, let me <laughs> not say that. You just, you just suck it up and you just, you just keep going. I mean, I know it's not always so easy, but it's really important for our kids to, to, to experience Christ in our church, uh, Christ in, in your home, and so that you can, you don't have to be religious in your house, you just, just live Jesus. In, in, and when you pray, when you speak, just speak Jesus. When you do something, uh, my little one, um, she saw me so multiple times when I wake up in the morning and I go into um, the lounge, I'll say, good morning, Jesus. And then she started to do the same thing. She walks in and say, morning, Jesus. And she keeps walking. And so there's multiple things that she picks up and you don't have to force them. They see, they feel, they experience. Uh, I don't know if you know, but they come from heaven. They come from, they come from the Father and they belong to the Father. And so, so if you struggle in an area with your children, then I'm going to give you uh, something that is really important. Is It's the helper, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are not supposed to, to raise our kids out of our own power. We're supposed to raise our kids through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit can minister. You, you are, we are doing everything by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit in us and through us. That is why Jesus said something so important and so vital. He says, I have to go so I can send you the helper. Why, why, why Jesus in the flesh tells us that this, I have to, this is really important that I've got to leave you. Because I'm going to send this helper and this helper, you're going to, you're going to really need him. Because I needed him to do my ministry. That is actually because Jesus couldn't do what he has done without the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so this morning I want to share some, I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit, but I also want to talk to you about your walking with God and just a journey with God. This is, this has been coming up so multiple times that how do I have a relationship with a God that I don't see? A God that I don't feel always, a God that sometimes I pray and I don't experience anything. How do I actually have a relationship? But it's, it's really, it's really such a blessing for us in this day to know that we have the Holy Spirit to have relationship. The Holy Spirit is God on earth. And the Holy Spirit is not a wind, He's not a fire, He's not a, uh, ex uh, this uh, electricity or this power. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's the person, uh, one of the Trinity of God. He is a person that you can speak to, that you can fellowship, that you can communicate, that you can um, have lunch with, you can have coffee with Him, um, you can uh, go to the movies with Him, you can do all these things with your friend, the Holy Spirit. And, and, and religion has taught us that God is somewhere and we've got to pray to God and maybe God's going to hear me and then there's going to be something or an intervention of God. And um, we always look down on ourselves. But, but when, when you are born again, there's three important steps. You got, Jesus says, you know, in order to, to enter the kingdom of God, you've got to get born again. As soon as you get born again, your spirit man gets born again. It's a, it's a brand new spirit. God seals your spirit by the Holy Spirit and He makes it pure and holy, as holy as it can be, for God to fellowship with your spirit man. Amen. And so in other words, as the Holy Spirit comes and He seals you for the day of redemption or for, for when Jesus comes. And so this is really important for us to know something that, that you are pure and holy before God when He fellowships with you. Because God cleaned you for himself in order to have fellowship with you. It is, it, this is amazing. And so it's not about your external, it's about your internal. And so I want to just read this out of Micah chapter 6, verse 8. It says, um, 
And uh, he says, uh, he says here, he has told you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to love kindness and to ha- walk humbly with your God. To walk humbly with your God. Second Corinthians 13 verse 14, it says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And, and this is really important. In order for me to actually raise my daughter, I really need the Holy Spirit. I really need the Holy Spirit to speak to me for what she needs and for what, how, how to actually work with her because He created her. And so your wife, God created your wife and God created your husband and you need the Holy Spirit to tell you and to show you how to deal with the person that you got married to. If you try to figure them out by yourself, by your flesh, it's going to be difficult because you can't. Because the Holy Spirit knows everything about everyone. He knows the intentions of people's hearts. He knows exactly where people are, at what time uh, they are. The Holy Spirit, God in the Old Covenant said to me, you've got to love you got to love your neighbor as yourself, and you got to love, and you got to do this, you got to do the Ten Commandments in the Old Covenant. But, but the, the Holy Spirit wasn't in them. The Holy Spirit visited people and He left, but He wasn't in them. In the New Covenant, the Holy Spirit's in us. And so in the Old Covenant, we, we know that we got to love people, but in the New Covenant, by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you um, to, to actually be gentle to your wife. To actually, the, the reason why she reacts the way she reacts is because she is asking for love, not for argument. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit knows exactly what to minister to you and when to minister to you and what needs to be, get, uh, what needs to be done. But sometimes we have a superficial relationship with God, or and let me ask the question, no we don't. You guys have awesome relationships with God, but sometimes it happens, and I want to take this as an illustration, there's a difference between something that's real and something that we are aware of, that we know about, and that is why when you come to church, this is not this is, this is fellowship with your believers, with the brothers and sisters, but this is not relationship with God. This is not. This, if this is what you call relationship, uh, it, it's, it's not. <laughs> and that is why you have multiple questions. Why does the church look like the church does? It is because people don't often know how to relate to God. And we say, but I can't see him. I don't know where he is. But I want to encourage you this morning. It, uh, the Bible is so clear. It says, blessed are you that don't see him, but yet believe. Blessed are you. Because you know the disciples had this challenge. They had to believe in a God that saves the world, but he's walking like a a physical person. He's doing the same things. He goes to the bathroom like everybody else. Jesus went. He got dirty like everyone. He got everything. He had to eat like everyone. And so, so we think if we see something physical, if we have a sign, then we can believe. And there's something more that can shift in our lives. But you are blessed beyond blessed to have the Holy Spirit as your friend. But a relationship with God, it takes faith. And I'm going to read this to you. Uh, um, blah, blah, blah. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. I'm going to stand and say, say with me, that He is. And so in other words, it's God is real. God is tangibly real. And, and the way, one of the ways that I have relationship with God is acknowledgement. Acknowledgement. And that, that, you can write this down, this is really important. If you acknowledge God The more you acknowledge Him, the more you believe that He's real and that He is a person of the Holy Spirit. And the person of the Holy Spirit, even if I don't see Him, He created everything that I do see. He created. The unseen created everything that is seen. And so in other words, it's by faith I have relationship with the Holy Spirit when I speak to Him that is here with me and that is in me and that is listening and is working with me because God has invested His is the, 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 the biggest investment ever that is the Holy Spirit in you to see your life succeed. Amen? And so the first thing is acknowledgement, to acknowledge that is here. Yeah, Leon, will you need my stone? 
It is the, you, can, you can stand here next to me and I can do the whole sermon. I can do the whole sermon. I can preach to everything. And I, they, there's something that happens is he knows my heart towards him, but, but there's something that changes when I actually look at him and I connect with him. And there's a connection. And then we can have fellowship. We can sit down and I can look at him and we can talk. We can share things. And that connection goes deeper. So the, de- the level of intimacy or the level of fellowship goes deeper. So there's a lot of people, thank you, Leon. There's a lot of people that say, yeah, you know, God, God knows my heart. But the thing is, is, do we know what God's heart is? And God's heart is to constantly have this intimacy with you as his child and to, to share himself with you in, in, in being real to you. And for me personally, I prayed this prayer so many times. I said, God, I said, Jesus, you uh, uh, be more real. Be more real. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this church thing. I'm, I'm tired of this religious stuff. I'm tired of listening to somebody tell me this, is, uh, this about Jesus, and that guy says this about Jesus, and that one. You, uh, you know how much you know about Jesus and your intimacy with him when somebody comes and they put questions. They come with questions and reasoning. Then you will find out how much you know Jesus. Because one thing is, people can reason a lot of things way smarter than I do. But I cannot walk away from what is physical. Jesus is physical to me. If business goes bad, how do you walk away from a friendship that you've built over a lifetime? You see, people walk away from Christ because they never had a relationship with Jesus. They never had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because I don't push Leon away if, I have a friend, if he's my friend. I don't push him away if my business goes this way or if this goes fails or this happens. I don't push him away. Why should I push him away? He's my friend. He's there to help me. Does that make sense? And so that God wants to become more real to his own people so that we do not question our relationship with him so much, but that we can actually uh, position ourselves to build this relationship. And how do you build a relationship? I want to just give you these two things. Um, uh, The letter kills. The Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And a lot of people have relationship with the Bible, but they don't know the author of the Bible. And so in other words, the Bible says that, that um, knowledge puffs up. So what happens to Christians so many times is we, we become religious. So what happens is I go and I read my Bible, I read my Bible, I study the Bible, I go to Bible school, I, I accumulate knowledge. And this knowledge accumulated, I can share with other people. I can, I can tell them what, what does the Bible say, what does the Bible say, what does the Bible say. But, but one thing is my life don't look like what I'm saying. My life don't respond in the way that I'm saying. I can share everything with you, what the Bible says. And so people, what they do is they think because people are smart with the Bible, they sometimes think they have relationship with Jesus. But there's two ways. There's a way that seems uh, uh, right to a man, but in the end is death. And, and the le- that's why the Bible says the letter kills. It means that if you only study the word and read the word to have, uh, to have information, but you don't, have the, uh, the, you don't inquire of the Holy Spirit to make this information a revelation. What does revelation mean? It mean, means to make it alive. Because the scripture was, the Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so the day when God showed me how much he loves me, I went back to Job's life. I said, God, but this can't be. This can't be. This can't be. It's not, I'm not questioning the Bible. I'm questioning what do I believe and how do I see things. And Lord, the Holy Spirit was present at that day. Teach me what happened. And so in, a, in, in that sense, I started to let the Holy Spirit teach me and interpret the Word of God. Because a lot of people, uh, I got this the other day, somebody came and they hugged me and they, they were so friendly to me because they've seen me on my teachings, but I don't know them. And so a lot of Christians <laughs> hear about God, but they don't know God. They have never entered into a relationship with God. 
A relationship requires, number two, it requires commitment. It requires commitment. And number three, it requires that I'm actually interested in you. We, only have, we will only have the level of relationship and the deepness of relationship that you are actually interested in me. We won't go further than that. As soon as your interest stops, then, then that's the level that, we've made, that we can maintain that level. But as soon as you are interested, then you start to dig deeper. You start to get closer. And it's not that God's far and you become close. No, God is with you. He can never leave you nor forsake you. But there's a level of intimacy that we just grow in. There's a level of intimacy that we keep growing in. And so I'm not saying that people don't have a relationship with God, but sometimes I wonder what it looks like. I really wonder what it looks like. And if we call what we do a relationship, coming to church, religious, religious people come to church. I'm not saying you're religious, you're awesome. <laughs> religious people go to church. People that is religious, that means we do actions but we don't care about the person. We do things. We think that doing the things is actually loving the person. That is why Jesus says uh, that there's multiple people that's going to do come to the Lord and they're going to say, but I've cast out devils. I've done this. I've done this. All in your name. And he says, but I don't know you. And so your actions is not relationship. Whether you tithe, whether you come to church, whether you do good works, whether you are... F- 24-7 in the orphanage, serving other people. That is not a relationship with Jesus. That is, that is works. Those things don't qualify relationship. And I've got this thing that people came to me, yes, but that guy is so good. Look at all these nice and good things that I'll do. That does not qualify. Our, your works does not qualify relationship. Does that make sense? I can send you flowers every single day, but if I don't know you, I still don't know you. (laughs) If we don't have time, quality time, if we don't have intimate time, and the amazing thing about God is He loves you. And He'll wait, He'll wait your whole life through, hoping that you will actually be interested in Him. That you'll actually be interested in Him. Because God will never force you into a relationship, and neither will I, because it's, it, that is, that's not love. That is not love. You can't, if you try to force me into liking you, or loving you, or doing good things for you, that's not love. That, that's religion. What, what are you trying to do with me? What, what do you want? And so God is so patient, and that is why we want to know the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit leads us, and He reveals Jesus Christ to us, And then from that point, Jesus reveals the Father to us. And so in other words, the Holy Spirit reveals the grace of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, as the word says, as I read. He reveals the grace. The grace means His unmerited favor towards you, His goodness towards you, not you towards Him. Him towards you, towards you, towards you, towards you, towards you, towards you, towards you. And it never stops towards you. I used this ex- uh, uh, illustration, and uh, Alan, um, they were with us. It is like God's grace is like I am a firefighter with a big hose. And God's love is like this. It's like I'm opening this hose, spraying constantly, and it never stops. We, with our religious mindset sometimes, and I'm sorry, speaking to myself as well, because I prayed this prayer. I said, Lord, expose religion in my life. Expose lies that I believe, because I don't need to do this, this, this uh, church religious stuff. I don't, I, don't, I don't want that. I want you, Jesus. I want the real Jesus. Because what am I doing? What am I playing? What am I trying to, uh, what am I trying to uh, acquire if I don't know him? What is the point? And so God's grace is like this, this flood of water coming to you. But I'll believe sometimes we, we say, no, 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 Lord. And we put this banner, this, this shield in front of his grace and in front of his, his this. And it keeps coming. And so God never stops coming towards you. God never stops sharing himself with you. God never stops talking to you. Never. He doesn't. He doesn't. 
It has our beliefs that changes and puts these things in front and say, no, Lord, I'm going to first work for this love. And so when I open up, when I grow in revelation of his love for me, grow in grace for me, grow in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, this, this thing starts to open up and I experience this amazing love. And so what happens is my religion, religious actions, what I grow up with, because we all grow up religious, let, let's... <laughs> <laughs> and so as soon as I experience that goodness of God, what do I do? I start to think, how am I going to repay my fault? How am I going to repay? What actions can I do to, to say thank you? And then what I do is I put the, the, the board back. I put the shield back in front of the, in front of the water. Amen? Does this make sense? And so God constantly wants to have intimacy and fellowship with us. And he wants to constantly be close to you. One of the lies we believe is in Deuteronomy 31 verse 8. It says, we, we think God is distant from us based upon us. But he says he will never leave you nor forsake you. God committed himself towards you unconditionally. There's no condition. There's not a condition that if you're good enough, if you do this, if you do that, if you do those things, then I will commit to you. No, God commits to you when you respond to his love, when you respond to the grace. He commits towards you and you can fellowship with him day after day after day. I'm going to read this again. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. It says, without faith, faith means that I believe that he is here, that he's here. There's, there's immediately something that triggers me when I believe that he's physically here. If you want to go home, do this, do the, practice this. Go and stand at your bed where it's, soft, where it's soft. Stand at your bed where it's soft. We've done this in our other church because sometimes... And I want to explain this because we are the ones blocking, not him. We are the ones blocking. And I, and I explained this previously, but we've done this at our church. And, and sometimes we, it, uh, uh, we, we grown up with this perception if people fall over, um, then this is weird, what's happening, and I can't, I can't explain this. And I know there's always, there's always this thing of the, the contrast. The devil will always try to do the contrast of what is pure. He will always bring in something that he will always try to, um, how can I say, make what is good seems ugly. And so what happens is we done in our church, we put a mattress down and we said to every person stand here, just stand like this and you're going to just open. That is why God says, I am there. I am your husband, your maker. You, you are the, the bride. Amen. And so, so biologically, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think it was children, but but everybody's with me. The woman, the man is the giver, and the woman is the receiver. <laughs> okay, so if you are the bride, you need to learn to receive intimacy, because once intimacy happens, then rebirth can come, reproduction can come. That's why a lot of people don't reproduce because there's no intimacy. I know you all, you're awesome, but you're with me. That is what's required. And so when I stand, and then I'll tell the people, stand like this, and you, in, yeah, stop, stop thinking about you. Just open up. And then you'll feel the presence of the Lord. Because it's constantly here. It's like a radio signal. If you tune in the radio, it's constantly there. <laughs> And so what we've done is we didn't touch those people. We don't touch anybody. We just let them stand. We just try to cover when they fall to the forward. That might hurt because there was no mattress in front. And so we'll stand just like this. We'll just stand. We don't touch. We don't pray for them. Nothing. We just say, you open yourself to receive. And then you experience immediately. And so this is the relationship is based upon faith not upon feelings or emotions. So by faith, I believe that God is. And then I, by faith, I believe that he's a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. Sometimes I sit with the Lord, even after so many years. I'll sit with the Lord. I feel nothing. I experience nothing. 
But when I stand up, I say, thank you, Jesus, that by faith, I know that something has just happened to me. Because we don't serve God carnally. We serve God spiritually. And it means that I can, I can activate these things and I can activate things in the spirit. I don't have to get God to come here. God is here. You've got to become awake and aware of that he's here. <laughs> We think revival is God coming and doing things like he's used to done. He's got to blast us. But actually, I want to tell you, revival will break out this morning if everybody is willing to receive. <laughs> Does that make sense? You don't have to do things. That doing is not a relationship. We do things out of the overflow of the relationship. And once I honor the relationship, and that is number four, honor. Once I honor the relationship above people, and that means I can come to different people, I can even come to the worldly people, and I'll speak to Jesus as if it's not even bothering me. But as soon as we come into certain conditions and we are afraid of speaking about Jesus, what helped me is constant relationship with Jesus made me become so comfortable with Jesus and made me realize that Jesus is giving me life, not my friends, not my business, not this, not that, not, nothing gives me life. And so in other words, that created a boldness in me to just speak about Jesus because Jesus, and then people will tell you as you grow up in school, are you a Jesus freak? No, I'm not a Jesus freak. I'm a son of God. What, what, what do you want? What do you, you, you know what, what was crazy I, in Bethlehem? They, they, um, they, they uh, contacted me, and I wanted to speak to, I wanted to actually speak on the radio, um, um, uh, doing sermons and, st and stuff. And the one lady, which is also a Christian, going to church, she said, no, um, we, we shouldn't do so much Jesus things. Um, and we put the question, why is things looking like it's looking? Because if Jesus don't save us, who saves us? If Jesus don't help you, <laughs> he helps us. <laughs> so I want to just, I wanna just uh, give you these um, additional points. It's communication is very important for relationship. It means that when I pray, I pray. And I've teached you, for those who haven't seen our sermon, my sermon on prayer, it's really important to go back on YouTube and look for the one that I'm speaking on, for, on prayer and go and, and listen to that again. Communication with the Holy Spirit is so important because you cannot build a relationship without communication. And in other words, is I don't come and sit down and just spill everything that's on my heart. I sit down and I, and I listen. And I have to take time to listen. What is good, what is good marriage advice? Listening. <laughs> listen. A lot of our problems won't be our problems if we can just hear or if we can just listen. And so what I, what I recommend, and this is what, um, what has been recommended to me as well, sit down, take your diary, put it next to you, take your Bible, put it next to you, and just wait for God. No, but I don't have time. Well, it's, 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 if you're interested, you will. If you're interested, you will. If you are really interested, huh? and God's not pushing interest on you, or God's not saying to you, and because that is the thing is God invites you into this amazing relationship where He feeds you, where He loves on you, where He can share every good and perfect gift. The next thing is, how do I have relationship with God? Is through His Word. It's, it's reading, really taking the Bible and reading the Word. But when I read the Bible, I ask the Lord, I pray. I say, Lord, please give me a revelation of your love for me. And then I start to read. Or I can say, Lord, please give me a revelation of your grace for me. Then I start to read. Does that make sense? Why do I do that? It's because my senses become aware of what I've just asked for. And the Holy Spirit will illuminate and bring forth to your attention what you just asked for. That's an amazing way. There's so many ways of building relationship, and, and you don't have to just follow what I'm, what I'm saying. But, but one thing is learning to receive and learning and practicing His presence is so important. So when you stand there by your bed, just learn to receive. 
If you don't feel anything, just go back and say, Jesus, I thank you. I learned to receive. I thank you. Thank you for your presence. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> just, just wait. We want to rush everywhere. We want to cramp God into a certain space of our days. But we expect so many times all these major things coming forth out of our lives. But we give Him so little time of our lives. So little attention. So little interest. And the reason why I'm saying the Holy Spirit is a friend and is a person, because the Bible says don't grieve the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? It means that the Holy Spirit has, has actual emotions. He doesn't live by them, but He has a feeling. So you can grieve Him, you can hurt Him, you can, you can do things. And so as, as Jesus got baptized and the heavens opened and the, uh, and the Spirit descended like a dove, Upon his shoulder, upon him. And so you can imagine me walking around with a dove on my shoulder. As soon I'm, I become aware of the dove. And then I walk around constantly becoming and being aware of the dove. Because the dove is the most important person in my life. And the more I practice that, the more it becomes a reality to me. Does that make sense? Okay, so the next point that I want to give you is being sensitive. Being sensitive. I'm just play, speaking plain to you today, but this will, this will re revolutionize your relationship, not your religion. <laughs> Jesus', op Jesus opposition of his life was religion, not the demons. Let that sink in. Jesus knew from which kingdom he came from. And he cast out devils. The devils were shaking when they saw Jesus. But what happened is his opposition came through religious people. People that as a form of godliness, we do in church, we read our Bible, we pray. And that is why Jesus says, don't do repetition. Don't, don't do it like the Pharisees. They do it all for themselves. They do it all for the show. They do it all for, so that they can say, I've just pleased my conscience. Sensitive, sensitive, sensitive in speaking. How do I... How do I build a relationship with the Holy Spirit is actually being sensitive in the way that I speak. I honor the Holy Spirit. I honor the way I, uh, I speak to Him. Some of you will, will speak a certain way in front of me, but you won't, you'll speak differently at home. <laughs> what does that mean? It means that, um, that I present myself when, uh, when, you, when somebody lo is looking at you, but when I'm at home, I'm just myself, and then I just, just let it go. And so the Holy Spirit is with me wherever I go. And so I'm being sensitive in my speaking. I'm being sensitive in my behavior. I'm being sensitive in my listening. I'm being sensitive in my obeying. And sensitive in honoring Him. I want to give you this. Just this. Galatians 5.22. It says, The fruits of the Holy Spirit is love, joy. Say with me, love. love. Joy. joy. Kindness. Patience. Gentleness. Forbearance. Goodness. Faithfulness. Self-control. I want to bring a freedom to you today. Is This is the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This is who the Holy Spirit is. To us, first, it means that the Holy Spirit wants to show you His love for you first. And because you receive that love, then I have His love to give to other people. Joy, I receive from Him first. And because I receive this joy, I can be joyful. And I can, I can let this joy be like a fire and putting other people to joy. And so there's a receiving first. And there's then a being. But a lot of people say, listen, I want to I wanna grow in patience. Don't, don't grow in patience. Please don't grow in patience. Don't, don't. Just don't. Just, just don't grow in patience, please. Just, just don't. <laughs> just don't. Don't grow in patience. 
You get to know the Holy Spirit. He is patient. And once you get to know Him, fellowship with Him, and patience will be present. You'll have a patience that you never... That, and that is the love of God. It goes beyond your love. You can only love to a certain point, and then it stops. That which Jesus said, He says, when somebody hits you on your, on your, on your left, hand, left cheek, turn your other cheek, uh, then uh, who's going to go for that one? Anybody home? Anybody going to go for that? No, because Jesus is saying there's something that's beyond your own ability. There's a power that's beyond you. And so once you have relationship with the Holy Spirit, you tap into that power beyond you. That is why when Stephen got stoned, when Stephen got stoned, he says, Father, forgive them for they do not know. Whom of us will, when somebody throws you with one rock, I, I, I'm, we're going to go, this, you just call for a rock fight. Are you, are you with me? Who's going to say, Father, forgive them for they do not know, and you get, you get thrown dead with stones? No, it's, it's a love that goes beyond yourself. It's the same with me. There was a time in my life that I said, Lord, your word says I've got to love everybody. Okay, I'm going to go out. Then I love them for a week, and I swear at them for the rest of the other two months. And one thing I found is that in my flesh, like Paul says, there dwells no good thing. So you depending on yourself to accomplish the work of God is impossible. For you to depend on your flesh to accomplish the work of God is impossible. For you to live the Christian life and live what God has called you for without the Holy Spirit is impossible. Okay, you can smile. It's good news. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's impossible. And that is why we need the help of the Holy Spirit to teach us and to show us and to be what we are not. And that is why when I, in, when I fellowship with the Holy Spirit, He is that love in me. I have, if I don't have His love in me, I cannot love you. I'll love you, but I'll, I'll love you with a, a, a sense of, I, I do this for you, but you've got to do something back for me. God's love is unconditional. I'll love you, but I'm not expecting something from you because I have this. I have this. I have this. And that is the same, uh, same with his patience. Don't grow in patience. Grow in knowing the Holy Spirit. A lot of people are going out there and you say, and I've done this, and I'm, I'm, I don't know if I've shared this before. I, there was a day when I got so, so charged. I was at school and I got so charged by, by, the, by this, uh, this moment I had with God that I was so excited and I went and I said, God, today you can test this, you can test me on this. Oh boy, never do that. Because God's not testing you, the devil will have a complete open door to you. And I got to school, somebody stole my, my, um, my what was it, my pen case out of my bag and I just completely freaked out. I completely freaked out. And sometimes what we have, we have a, have a fleshly self-righteousness. We have a fleshly way of seeing things, of trying to stand our stands. And I, I, had, a beat, I had a nice beating in that day, in the sense of, of I, I felt miserably. I felt miserably. And that's why you don't depend on the flesh to produce the supernatural. You depend upon the supernatural to produce the supernatural. You let the Holy Spirit, Spirit be the Holy Spirit in you. My work is to know Him. My work is to, to get to know and be interested in Him. That is my, that's my job. And to have a, what I call a relationship. That means I invite Him. Or not invite Him. I go with Him. I do things with Him. A lot of people, when you pray, you say amen, and that amen means it's a switch off. God, I just switched you off. I'm going to start my day now. It's, it, it, I've been there. I've done this. And now I don't. I really, it's not. God, you, you are my day. I can't stop thinking of God. I can't. It's, it's just you can train yourself. It's how God made you. That is why he says they become fertile in their minds because they, their minds weren't stayed upon the Lord. 
And that means, it means that we are consumed in our minds by other things. And instead of being consumed by those things in your mind, you can choose to train yourself. When I was full-time in business, I said, Holy Spirit, I want to get to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I want to know you. And then every time that I go to the toilet, I say, Holy Spirit, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. I just took that moment of acknowledgement in my busy day. I took that moment of acknowledgement. Holy Spirit, you're amazing. I love you. I appreciate what you're doing. You, are, you, you love me. I thank you that you're so kind, so joyful towards me. Thank you that you rejoice over my life. I love you. Then I go on. And then later on, when I got to go to the bathroom again, I, I, it comes back to me. Holy Spirit, you're amazing. I love you. You're awesome. You love me. Thank you for revealing yourself to me. Thank you for revealing Christ to me. Thank you for, for becoming real to me. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but who? <laughs> Does that make sense? And so that's faith by saying with my mouth, Father, you love me. It's not a feeling. It's not an emotion. It is, Father, you love me because you said you love me and you like me. You dance over me because your word says so. And Father, I thank you that you rejoice over my life and you've got more interest. And, but a lot of people struggle to... to, to um, to bring to uh, the, what they do is they want to put the love of God for their lives and for themselves. They want to put it on the same scale as their conditions and circumstances, what they go through. And you say, how, how do I bring these two together? If God loves me so much, then why is things the way it is? I'm going to help you. I'm going to, well, he's going to help you. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Peter 1 verse 3. 2 Peter 1 verse 3. I've preached so many times on this, but you can write this down. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. Grace and peace. Grace means His supply, supply, supply. His flood towards you. His goodness towards you. His love. Grace, 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 grace and peace. Through the knowledge of, of God and of Jesus our Lord. It means that we've got to know who our God is. And, and as His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him, again through the knowledge of Him, who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us, say with me, exceedingly great and precious promises. That through these, you may be partakers of the divine nature. So God gives you promises. God says, I, 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 don't, I don't put you on earth. I don't put my spirit in you. Just leave you. I give you promises. I give you these promises. These promises that I will never leave you nor forsake you. God, I don't feel, you, I don't feel something. I don't, uh, I, I don't experience something. I need wisdom. Okay, the Bible says that I have the mind of Christ. I have the wisdom of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that I know all things and that you teach me all things. And Lord, I thank you that I'm, I, I, have to, I have an answer, but I thank you that you, you will teach and train me in the way that I should go. I will have the answer. A lot of people relationship with God is, a, is, is in a servant form, a serving f servant. But, but God, Jesus paid for a friend relationship. A servant has to beg God. A servant has to beg God. A servant fears God, but a wrongly fear. A servant is afraid of God. A servant is afraid of the boss. Amen? The man upstairs. You've heard so many people say the man upstairs. <laughs> oh, boy. When I hear that phrase, I'm like, <laughs> that's a servant relationship. And then we have a child, a son, a friend relationship. A friend, when I'm a friend of God and God's a friend, with, uh, a friend of me and I'm walking with my friend, I go into places. A friend goes to places and see things a servant never does. A servant works for a position. A friend have a position. That's what I'm saying. Don't keep working for the relationship. Because then we might be entering into a servant state of trying to get to know God. Be a friend. And talk to him as if he's real. Talk to him as if he is an actual person.
I want to just give you these and I'm going to try to finish. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, it says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. It means that if I try to have relationship with God on a carnal level, I won't experience God. I won't experience His voice. But the Bible says when you enter into the spiritual size, even if you are here and you say, but I've never heard God's voice, what does that sound look like? Oh, what does that look like? Or what does that sound like? What is, what is the voice of God? Just change your prayer life. Say, God, in the morning when you wake up, say, Father, I thank you that you love me. Father, I thank you that you are speaking to me. I'm your sheepy. Because he says we are your sheep. And Father, thank you that I can hear your voice. I hear your voice and I abide by your voice. And I thank you, Father, that I am led by your Spirit. And the Bible says that those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. And I thank you that I'm led by the Spirit. Let me explain something quickly to you. This, uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish off with this. I hope so. There's two, there's two things. Okay, so we've got our spirit man, which is the re reborn man, and you've got your flesh. Okay, so what happens sometimes when I don't experience God's voice, and I start to declare, uh, Lord, I thank you that I can hear your voice. What happens is I activate my spirit man into, to, to become more sensitive and more sensitive. Because what do I do? I speak by faith. Does that make sense? So I speak by faith. Sometimes, I'll, I'll, when I, when, for example, you, when you speak identity, uh, what God says about you, you activate what is in the spirit, even if you don't see it physically in your, in your uh, physical state. You activate everything that is in the spirit. You activate those things and keep activating those things and keep speaking forth. I can guarantee if you can't hear God's voice, and I've seen so many people, Christians, that just don't know that God's actually speaking to them. But if you keep saying week after week, Lord, I thank you that I can hear your voice. I hear your voice. Jesus, I thank you you love me. I hear your voice. And I don't feel anything because your, your, your body will tell you just because you don't experience something, just because you don't feel something, that it's not there. Your body will tell you just because you don't see God, he's maybe not yet close by. Maybe because you see your circumstances, God's not, God's not present. He's not interested. And so that's, that's the carnal way. And so you speak yourself into you speak yourself into the spirit, if I can say it like that. And it's not lying if you don't feel uh, if, if for, for example, you have um, symptoms in your body of sickness, and you say, "By his stripes, I am healed." That's not lying. That's speaking the truth, because that is who you are in the spirit. And so you've got to understand wherever you need. In your, in your whole life, in this relationship with God, keep, but if you're not experiencing, speak those things forth. If you don't feel God, say, Father, I thank you that I feel you and that I can experience you. But Father, my, my relationship with you is not based upon feelings and, and emotions. But Father, I thank you that I can experience you because you love me. And I thank you that I'm growing deeper in relationship with you and that you are so special. And Daddy, I thank you that you're not mad at me. Thank you, Father, that I've just messed up, but you're not mad at me. So many people, when they mess up, they go, they, they beg God for forgiveness. You're already forgiven. <laughs> You're already forgiven. You're asking Jesus to do something he's already done. And this sounds funny because it's not familiar in our mindset. He's already forgiven you. What we do is when we repent, we change our actions. We change our way of thinking. That's, repentance is different. But I don't live, I, I live a life, you live obviously a life of repentance in the sense of constantly changing and, and changing the way you think. But I don't live a life of, of just, uh, uh, just, uh, may, uh, I wonder when God's going to, uh, uh, is he happy, is he not happy? No, no, that's not what the Bible teaches. He says in the new covenant that he loves you. And he, he's, he's got an unconditional love and he can never stop and it can never change. And I want you to go home and practice these things because the one other, re other way that you can also have relationship with God, it happens when you 
start, you sit down, sit down, and then you start to imagine how God dances over your life. You start to imagine how God hugs you, how God loves you, how God is pleased with you. We can say with our words one thing, and that's why the Bible says people confess with their, with their mouths, but in their hearts it's different. It's because sometimes we say, yes, God loves me, but actually in my back of my imagination, I've got a wrong picture of the Father. And so there's, there's this thing that causes constant space of where there's space. And the Bible says in Romans, I, uh, I believe it's in Romans 8 verse, I think it's 37. It says, nothing, nothing, nothing can ever separate you from his love. I, I, I hope you're getting something from this morning. But a relationship, really, it, I'm going to read this. I did say I'm going to try to finish. I'm, I'm, I mean, that just, that just gives me another half an hour. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It says here, Enoch, Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. This is, this is way before, this, this is at the beginning. Enoch, Enoch walked with God. I want to read verse 22. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years. Wow, what a privilege, walking with God 300 years. And then verse 24, it says, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Okay, so Enoch just, whoop, and he was away with God. Why, why, what kind of intimacy was there? What, what kind of relationship was there? And that is why God, in this, in this I'm, I'm sharing this with you as an invitation. I'm not sharing this with you as a disqualification. Wherever you are, there's no disqualification. Because we all learn. I still learn. I really still learn. So there's no disqualification for where you are. It is an invitation to go and grow in relationship I've been married now for 14 years, and I still have to grow. I still realize, I still realize things. Oh, boy, you've got to get up. You've got to start to learn some new things. A relationship don't end. A commitment don't end. It is a commitment for life. And a lot of people have never made a commitment towards God. It means that I will walk with you, and I, wherever we're going to go, Leon, uh, Leafy, <laughs> It might come across weird. <laughs> if, if, if we've made a commitment, then we're walking anywhere together. And all the battles we fight together, all the places we plan together. But, I, but I'm sensitive for Him, for the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit knows what I don't know. He sees what I don't see. And He knows how to get me to where God has planned for me. And so this, to, to know the person is to be interested in the person and is to be sensitive for the person because... My mouth makes a difference regarding the person. If I, if I sit now and I speak nice to her and I go out and I start to swear at a bunch of people, this person loves those bunch of people that I just sweared at. <laughs> so what, what do I do? I want to change my actions because I honor the person. But this commitment doesn't change. You never go out of this commitment. You stay. You're stuck. You're there. Not because I have to, but because I want to. Thank you, princess. It's a commitment for life. And a lot of, lot of, lot of children are saved by God. Christians that are saved, they're going to go to heaven, but they've never committed to walk in a relationship with God. They've, they've never. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, let's stop there. I think you definitely got something great out of this. Father, thank you so much for this morning. We bless your name. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, for Father, for just being so intimate. And Holy Spirit, I thank you for your power that's just flooding this place right now. Thank you for flooding this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. More, Lord. More, more, more. 
Thank you, Jesus, for more. Just close your eyes and just, just receive. And we're going to be finished now. Just receive from Him. Just be the receiver. Just be the receiver for just just to take just take it this few moments. Just be the receiver. Like I showed you practically how to receive and and just engage. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And for those who have never been baptized with Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, I I, I come and baptize me with fire and power. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your gentleness. Thank you that you are so gentle towards every person here. That you are so patient with them. That you are so kind towards them. That you are so faithful towards them. And towards us all. That you are so full of love towards us. So full of grace towards us. But Father, I just pray for every person that as they go home, that they will be interested to know you. That they will be interested to know you. I just feel how the Father wants to just bring a fresh sense of His love for you as you sit here today. We all grow in relationship. Nobody has a winning recipe, but we all grow in relationship. But I just sense how the Father wants to just lavish His love upon you as a person. And just let Him, just allow Him to love you. Allow Him to love you. If, even if you say, but how, how can God love me? Allow Him. Just, just receive. It is by receiving that, you lo- that we change. It's by receiving that things shift. Just receive. Don't try to reason. Don't try to feel something. Just say, I receive. I, I just receive. I receive. We open up, Lord. We open up. We thank you that you are in us and that we can become more aware of you, Lord, that is in us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you for it, Father. Just want to, I just want to give you this one, one point. And we're going to, we're going to leave. It is when you are sitting with the Lord, just, just be present. Just be present. Just be present in that moment. Even if it's just one minute, even if it's two minutes, just be present in the moment. Because you can, ex- you can just, just experience this or think about this. If we go for coffee and I'm sitting with you, having coffee with you, but I'm busy on my phone and I'm in a rush going somewhere because we've got to get things done. <laughs> and so there's small things, but what I just say to my heart is just, just try to be intentionally present. And if you struggle, don't, don't feel condemnation. Condemnation is not God. Anything that feels or where you experience disqualification, that's not God. God don't disqualify because He already qualified. God already cleaned you for Him, for His pleasure to have relationship with you. And so if you don't experience something today, just go back because you have committed for your life. You've committed to walk with the Lord for life. 
Amen. I bless you, church. I want to really encourage you that if there's, if there's shifts and changes and things happening in your life and there's testimonies, please, please write them down, send us an email, or let us know about the testimonies about what God is doing in your life. We want to share them with other people because it's important. It's important. If, you, if something has just opened up for you personally, it is a blessing to share it with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, bless you, bless you. And go and have an awesome relationship and uh, time with Jesus. He waits. Hallelujah. Amen.